Hello again, fam. Can you believe it's 2020? Hard to believe I've been doing this for almost a year now. Thank you all for being here and taking the time. The purpose of this video is for you to better be able to decide whether or not a 14 tooth front sprocket and 60% stiffer clutch springs and a lifter plate are worth the money, install time, and energy. I will do this by showing you some before and after footage of how the bike performs and see how easily the front wheel pops up in first and hopefully second gear. So stay tuned. I'm doing these upgrades because I've heard that the 14 tooth front sprocket is a game changer in terms of pep and overall performance for the Grom. So for under $10, how can you not try that? I was also starting to experience an occasional slipping in the clutch at wide open throttle in fourth gear. Then I got to thinking, this would be an absolute must for someone that wanted to install a big bore kit and or start stunting. So I decided to try them both out. Let's meet the items we will be installing today and why I chose them. All of these items can be found in the description below the video. First up, the 14 tooth front sprocket by JT Sprockets, part number JTF249.14, which is important because there are a lot of different sizes. I chose JT Sprockets because several guys in the local squad have successfully used them many times, and I've never seen any problems with them. Just install them and forget them. At the time of this video, I paid $9.90 on Amazon for the sprocket. The second item is the six 60% clutch springs by SMR or Sex Machine Racing. I chose SMR 60% springs because again, they came highly recommended by members of our local Grom squad and numerous online forums and Honda Grom Riders Facebook group. Shout out to all you crazy members of that group, by the way. Additionally, if you're going to spend the time and energy to update the clutch, do the 60% springs. The EBC 10% are a complete waste of time, and a case can be made that the 30% springs are a waste of time too, since I've read cases that many have installed 30% springs and still get clutch slipping when trying to get the front tire up. I can tell you that six 60% springs are not a hard clutch pull. It feels like my stock DRZ clutch now. Do not be intimidated or think that the 60% springs are gonna suddenly turn your Grom into a forearm exercise machine. I purchased these springs from Steady Garage, and at the time of this video, I paid $38 for them. The third item is the Chimera CNC clutch plate, an absolutely essential item when doing a clutch upgrade for two reasons. One, you need a stronger clutch plate to compensate for the significant amount of pressure difference on the springs. Two, and equally as important, you need an aftermarket clutch plate that has six holes in it, instead of only three, so you have the versatility of being able to install up to six bolts into the clutch plate, which adds stability and security to offset the added pressure of the stronger springs. For me, the Chimera accomplishes both of these things, plus they make arguably the best Grom intake on God's green earth. I purchased the Chimera clutch plate at Steady Garage for $39.99. So all in on parts, I'm at only $88. That's if I do the install myself, which, are you guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. Before we install everything, let's see how the stock clutch and stock gearing performs when trying to pop the front tire up. What's up guys? We're now in the little practice area. I just wanna show everyone that right now we are on private property. We are not sharing the highway with any other motor vehicles. And uh, just wanna get that right out of the way. The second thing I want to tell you before I attempt these is I am by no means an expert wheelier. I can barely pop this thing up, but I wanted to show you uh, just a before with a 15 tooth normal stock sprocket and with uh, the stock springs, how much slippage you get when you're trying to pop this thing up. Anybody can get it up in first, but getting it up in second is pretty hard. So I'm going to pop it up in first uh, to show you, show you guys what that's like. So here we go. I'm going to do a pop up at like, I don't know, about here, eight miles an hour. Here we go. So easy, comes right up. Another one. So that comes right up. Nowhere near balance point, so I'm chasing, but the whole point is to show you how it comes up but I can just feel that I'm losing so much. The clutch is slipping so much when I pop it 
there's we're just we're leaving so much of the power to the rear wheel on the table it's frustrating so i'm gonna go again here sit my butt butt back on the seat quite a bit and here we go so it comes right up now let's go to second gear okay this is second gear about 20 miles an hour not even close just slipping and I gave that a good rev dropped it and yanked at the same time so let's try that again nope not even close I mean the front tire is coming off maybe three or four inches so again let's try one more time here we go uh, that was the highest I've ever gotten it oh gosh man Well, there you have it, guys. That's the before. Now let's install the uh, 14 tooth front sprocket, the clutch springs, and the, uh, the better lifting plate. Like some of my previous videos have stated, I am not a mechanic and won't be going into a detailed step-by-step -step here. This is just an overview of what we did, some pointers, problems, and solutions we ran into. There is plenty of good content here on YouTube showing these procedures in great detail way more talented than me. How do you think I learned? For an in-depth look at clutch upgrade installation, check out the description below. Photogrammer has an outstanding video on the procedure. Starting with the 14 tooth front sprocket, no need for a stand, let's loosen the axle and chain adjusters and give the front tire a push until you have maximum chain slack. Remove the chain and the two bolts holding the sprocket in place, then remove the little locking piece by aligning the grooves. Now persuade or yank on the sprocket and it should pop right off. Lube the exposed shaft with some grease and slide or persuade the new sprocket on. I had some rust and that original sprocket had been on there for five years, so I actually had to lightly tap mine on with a mallet and a large socket. Reinstall and turn the locking piece so that all the holes line up and reinstall the two screws. These screws will pull everything together and tighten everything up. 37 foot-pounds is the torque spec. Take up the chain slack again with the adjusters, align the wheel properly using the alignment marks on each side of the swing arm and tighten the axle back down to 44 foot-pounds. Easiest install around. You should be feeling confident. Get a beverage and prepare yourself for what's next. Let's remove the right rear set so it's out of the way to gain access to the clutch cover. A 19 mm and 12 mm sockets will take care of the three bolts so you can swing the rear set out of the way, held on only by the rear brake line. Put the grom in gear. At this point, it's easiest for several reasons to carefully lay the grom down on its left side on something soft, being careful to support the areas such as the clutch lever and gear shifter from taking too much of the weight. With the bike on its side, it's much easier to place the springs and retighten the clutch plate down. It also gives you the option of not having to change the oil as it all falls to the left side of the engine. I just changed mine, so this was a little added bonus. If you choose to leave the bike upright, remember to drain the oil before pulling the clutch cover. Use an 8mm socket to loosen the 9 bolts holding the clutch cover on. They're all the same length, so you don't need to worry about any sequence. Lightly tug and persuade the clutch cover off. Remember to have something to catch the oil if the bike is upright when you pull the cover. Even if you drained it, there will still be a significant amount left over to seep down the side of the case. As the cover comes off, be mindful of the gasket. We want the gasket to be completely stuck to the clutch cover or the case, not a little of both. Most gaskets rip because a portion of it is stuck to one surface while the rest is stuck to another. Just go slow and watch what's happening. Oftentimes if you are careful, the gasket will come out intact. Sometimes we are unlucky. Once the case is off, the spinner and the clutch basket are exposed. Pictured here, I do not have a spinner. It was deleted when I installed the Kitako clutch cover. Do a visual check of the bottom of the case with a flashlight. Anything down there that's not supposed to be? Now grab the screen, check that out too. Get it cleaned up and dried, then put it back in. The screen only goes in one way, so fiddle with it like I did until it goes in with no resistance. We are done procrastinating. Let's get into this clutch now. Remove the three bolts holding down the lifter plate. 
Give each screw just one turn per screw at a time, moving in a circle to keep the lifter plate flat over the springs and not banking to one side. Once the three screws are removed, flip the lifter plate over and push the bearing out. Do yourself a favor now and go put that bearing in the freezer. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to get into the new lifter plate. Congrats, you're done with the easy part of the clutch upgrade. You're now at a fork in the road. Please heed my advice here and avoid the troubles and pain I went through. Place all six new 60% springs in place of the stock springs and thread the bolts back into the threaded posts. All are drilled, but only three are threaded, so make sure you have it right. And make sure the tops of the springs aren't sticking out the sides of the lift plate either. Keep them nice and tucked in. It might take a friend here to mash down on the lifter plate so that you can get all three bolts threaded. Once your bolts are threaded, go in a circle and tighten each bolt a full turn, making sure the clutch lifter plate is staying level and not banking to one side. Use a quarter inch socket wrench with your hand choked all the way up to the top of the wrench to reduce leverage and increase feel of resistance. Once the bolts are about three fourths away from being seated, start giving them only half a turn each. Remember, these bolts, the posts, and the new lifter plate are all significantly under more stress because of the powerful springs. There will come a time when you're turning the bolt and resistance will build rapidly. Stop here. Give it a final small cinch, 1 8 turn max, and they're done. Directions and Grom manuals will tell you to whip out a torque wrench and take these aluminum screws to nine foot pounds. Well, I snapped one of my bolts this way. Don't do this. Having them tight with the springs pushing against them will inhibit them from backing out. Stop here, they're tight, you're done. Now if for some reason you snap one of your bolts or you'd like to thread the other three posts, keep watching. We're gonna go a little deeper now and all you'll need here is a drill, a set of drill bits, an extractor if you broke off one of the bolts in the post, and most importantly, an M6 by 1.0 millimeter tap. If you snap the head off the bolt while attempting to seat the clutch plate, simply use a small extractor or a small drill bit to remove the remaining screw in the post. You can actually drill it all the way out the bottom of the post. The back is open, which is what we will be doing with a small drill bit. Of course, an extractor bit would have worked too. At this point, you can try again by going to Ace Hardware and picking up several spare bolts size M6 by 1.0 by 20 millimeter. This is the simplest way to complete the project. Or you can choose to strengthen and add more stability and security to your clutch like I did. It will require more work, full removal of the clutch, and you will need one of those funny 20 millimeter and 24 millimeter lock nut removal tool clutch removers, which can be purchased on Amazon for $8 linked in the description below. In my opinion, this is a worthwhile tool to get as it can also remove your oil spinner if need be. Hey, good morning guys. Next morning, we had to uh, go ahead and call it early because when we were tightening down uh, the 60% springs with just three bolts, we sheared one of the bolts right there. Sheared the head right off, trying to get to nine foot pounds. So we went to the internet and we decided that uh, what everybody's saying is do not try to go to nine foot pounds. What you got to do is uh, just go to slightly overhand tight. So that's what we're going to do. The other thing that I really wanted to do, and what we noticed is that only three of these, there's six posts, only three are threaded, but the other three are, are uh, drilled. So what we decided to do is we got a tap and we got some WD-40. We're going to pull this thing apart and we're going to tap the other three posts. So I'm going to have six screws here. I also went to Ace Hardware Supply and bought six screws for this that fit. Uh, so we're gonna pull this whole thing apart, we're gonna tap these other three, and we're gonna have six screws in there because my Chimera clutch plate has six holes. So we're gonna have that much more stability, we're gonna tighten them all to hand tight and see how it goes. But anyway, um, sorry to go off script here for so long, you, uh, you kinda have a plan of how these videos are gonna go and then stuff like this comes up and you just gotta make lemonade out of lemons. So keep following along guys, thanks. Hopefully you guys learned something. Go to Ace and pick up six fresh hex bolts, size M6 by 1.0 by 20 millimeter and an M6 by one tap. Use your lock nut removal tool with an impact driver to remove the locking nut and pull your clutch all the way out. 
You'll have to also remove the funny half bowl sitting underneath the clutch at the same time. Two 10 millimeter screws are all that hold it in place. Remove the discs and pressure plate, which has six posts on it. Don't be afraid to take it all apart. It's not hard to put it back together. Just don't lose track of two washers. One is thick and one is thin. Notice on the pressure plate that all holes are drilled out, but only three are tapped. Keep all the other clutch components in a clean area away from where you're tapping the pressure plate. You do not want metal shavings on your other components or you'll be giving each component an oil bath one at a time like we did. Use some WD-40 as a cutting lube and slowly thread the other three posts using your new tap from Ace in a drill. Don't get greedy here, go slow. Only two or three new tapping rotations at a time before reversing the tap out and washing it clean with WD-40. Take your time and make sure the drill stays perfectly up and down. Once you're done, you'll have a much more stable one screw for every spring instead of two to one, like before. Give your pressure plate a bath with hot water before reassembly to remove the shavings. Then put a little oil back on it when it's dry. All right, the order in which you reassemble everything is critical here, so make sure you get this right. Again, for reassembly, I would highly suggest that you watch that photogrammer video I referred to you earlier because he does a great job of explaining the way all these components go together. But I ended up assembling the clutch slightly different from him, and here's why. He assembles the pressure plate, discs, clutch middle, all inside the basket, and tightens the springs down with the lifter plate before installing it back on the bike. Problem with this is if those outer clutch notches aren't in perfect straight lines, the whole assembly will not go down into the clutch basket all of the way. We initially fought the clutch assembly for 10 minutes before figuring out the top disc was off just enough to not let everything properly seat. So we ended up loosening those bolts until the discs would move, then everything finally seated correctly. We then retightened the six lifter plate bolts. So let's walk through it again. Assemble the components in order. Take your clutch basket, then set inside of it the thick washer, clutch pressure plate, discs, and clutch middle. You'll have to fiddle with everything a bit to see how it all fits together, but it can only go together and seat correctly one way. Once you've got your clutch sandwich, place your six 60% springs and lifter on top, and lightly thread all six bolts, just enough to hold them in place, but keep some play for the discs. It's time to put this clutch back where it belongs. Before we do this, make sure the clutch collar and clutch outer guide are still sitting pretty on the rod you pulled the clutch off of. Place the clutch sandwich onto the rod in the engine that it came off of. Looks nice. And you felt it fully seat, didn't you? That's great. But you forgot something. Carefully pull the whole clutch basket off because we need to also reinstall the funny half bowl and it has to go on at the same time. Don't let that thick washer fall out of place during the move. The clutch will not function properly if it moves and it doesn't get captured by the rod. Reinstall the whole clutch basket and funny half bowl at the same time and recheck that everything is seated properly. Place the thin washer on the rod and reinstall the clutch locking nut with your special tool. Use a friend to hold the clutch assembly while you bring the locking nut to 47 foot-pounds of torque. Don't forget to cinch down the two bolts on the funny bowl too. It's time to tighten down the bolts on the 60% stiffer springs and lift plate once and for all. Just like before, use a quarter inch socket wrench with your hand choked all the way up to the top of the wrench to reduce leverage and increase feel of resistance. Now you can safely go in a circle or a triangular pattern tightening all the bolts. Don't get greedy here just one to two turns each bolt. Keep it level as it tightens. Don't let it bank to one side. As it gets close to seating, reduce your turns to one half a turn each. There will come a time when you feel a sudden increase in resistance on the bolt. Now you're seated. Give it a one eighth turn more to cinch it down and they're good. It's easy from here guys, congratulations. This is another good time for a break so take one. Pat yourself on the back. You're done with the hard part and you've earned it. I'll bet you forgot about that lifter bearing in the freezer, didn't you? You're silly. Retrieve it and put it home where it belongs. Since it's cold, it should go in by hand, but sometimes in life, things don't go as planned and one must improvise. If the bearing doesn't fully seat, give it a baby tappy tap tapperoo with the mallet. You're done. 
Slap that case back on carefully and don't forget about the clutch guide and two wire guides that are fastened with the clutch bolts. Hand thread all the clutch cover bolts down to hand tight, then tighten them a little tighter with your sockets. Then give them one last snug up. Right when you feel a sharp increase in resistance, stop. That's perfect. Just like the clutch spring bolts, that's all the torque you need. If you drained your oil, don't forget to replace it now. Since I've been helping you avoid pitfalls this entire video, stop. I'm gonna help you avoid one more. Don't forget to correctly readjust your clutch cable. For whatever reason, it doesn't just save your previous settings. My clutch lever was swinging around like a window shutters on a mid-century farmhouse in the Midwest in a windstorm. So readjust the slack accordingly before taking her out. I know I've said it a couple times now, but seriously, congratulations you guys. You and me both just completed the most in-depth and sketchy mod to our Groms yet. I commend you on your efforts. Now, did they make a difference? What's up, everybody? CT Gromer back out here for the second time now with the new clutch, the new clutch springs, the new clutch plate, and the 14 2s front sprocket. And I am back in the parking lot where I am not interfering with any motor vehicles on the highway. I'm on private property, safely performing and doing whatever it is that I do. And I wanted to say, just first of all, I will, I will say that the 14 tooth front sprocket gives it a lot more, <laughs> like goodness, gives it a significant more amount of uh, acceleration. We got a lot more acceleration with that. Bike pulls hard. The clutch feels like my DRZ clutch with these 60% springs. I love it. It feels like I'm actually riding a big bike. The clutch is not hard to pull. I've seen people go, oh, I don't know, maybe I should just do three 60 percenters and three 30 percenters or three 60 percenters and three stocks. Don't do that. Do all six. It's a nice pull. I really like it. Okay, now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, can we get up in second and how much different does it feel? I can already tell that when I'm um, when I shifted through the gears hard, it, it grabs instantly. So I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot less slip. I imagine that we will. So I'm going to go slow and pop it up in first and just see how it feels. It comes up a lot easier and there is almost no slip. My gosh. Yeah, I don't know if you can see and compare it to my other one, but it's so much more... <coughs> pronounced. I don't want to say violent, but it comes up. There's no drag. Almost no drag. Where before, there was a lot of slip and the front end was just kind of uh, trying to get up while the clutch was not giving it all the power to the rear wheel. So let's go again. You guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm just giving it a light pull, a light tug. It comes right up. One more. Yeah. So easy. Okay, the second moment, probably the most important thing you guys have been waiting for now, can it get up in second gear? I'm gonna say the same thing I said before. I'm not good at wheelies, but can I get it to come up in second gear? So I'm gonna go to an indicated 20 miles an hour and give it a yank, pop the clutch, see what happens. Sit back on the seat. All right, we're indicated 21. Let's just see what happens. It got higher and it popped, but it just didn't. Let's go again. Okay. So it is coming up more than my first attempt with the stock sprocket and the stock clutch spring, stock clutch plate. It is coming up more, about 22 miles an hour. Oh, okay. It's coming up. Definitely better than stock. That was there, that was there. I'm gonna sit back more. Oh, that was it! Oh my gosh, I got one! Man, this is tough, you guys. Well, I got one. I think you guys saw it. Here's the bottom line on the 14 tooth front sprocket. It lived up to the hype and seemed to wake the bike up all the way around. For my style of riding around town and in a pack of groms, I'm very happy with the gain in acceleration. 
I think stunters will enjoy the lower gearing as it helps them get the front wheel up. You definitely run through first and second gear faster. To me, this is not that big of a deal because my other bike, a DRZ400, does the same thing. Shifting is fun, it doesn't bother me, though some may see it as a negative. One thing to note is that this will increase your speedo reading just a little bit. If you're reading 50 miles an hour with a 14 tooth front sprocket, you're likely actually going approximately 46 to 47 miles an hour. Overall, this is a must do mod for only $10 and five minutes of install time. The clutch springs and upgraded lifter plate do what everyone said they would, but the difference doesn't seem as drastic as the 14 tooth front sprocket difference. The clutch upgrade removed all clutch slipping, which is exactly what I wanted. For some reason, I thought pulling the front end up in second would magically be easily attainable now, but all it did was just make it physically possible, which it wasn't before in stock condition because the slipping with the stock springs was just too severe. Too much power was lost. I would definitely recommend the clutch upgrade to anyone with aspirations to stunt or anyone who will be adding power to the stock engine. Don't forget about the clutch or it will slip. Remember mine would occasionally slip in fourth gear just with an exhaust, intake, ECU, and cam. Believe it or not, I actually like the clutch pull more now. It feels like a big bike clutch. For those of you on the fence, I'm telling you, do not waste your time with anything but 60% springs. These springs do the job right, and the clutch still feels normal in my hand. The pull is not too heavy. Worth the money, time, and effort? For me, barely. I went the extra mile installing the clutch, which took extra time and effort. I don't stunt, and I barely have more power than stock. However, I like knowing I have more robust clutch. And I like to wrench and show you guys what I learned. So for me, worth it. For you, you decide. Oh man, I almost forgot. Shout out to Roland who came over and helped me with this. Check out his Instagram to see what we're doing over here in Fresno, California. Fun fact, Roland actually found me from this YouTube channel, which is awesome. Now he's another regular member of our local Grom squad, which just keeps growing. Guys, don't be afraid to reach out to local Gromers in your area. Find them on YouTube, IG, or Facebook. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. I certainly did. And I wanted to give a special shout out to Roland for coming over and helping me through this because honestly, that was a pretty hard install. And uh, there's some things in there I've never done and he was a little bit more confident in. So the two of us being there helped out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something about the clutch springs and about the 14 tooth front sprocket. I hope I've influenced your decision one way or the other. Maybe you decide that you want it and it's for you and you know it's worth the money spent. Or maybe you don't. Either way, I'm just trying to provide you with knowledge and food for thought. You guys, if you like the content, please consider subscribing. Every subscriber means the world to me and every like and every subscriber keeps me motivated and keeps me producing good content, quality content. <laughs> for you guys. First video of 2020. 2020, dude. 2020, that's crazy. I can't believe we're already in 2020, but much more content and much more love for your guy, CT Grommer, from me to you. Everybody ride safe. Love you all very much. Absolutely 100% worth it. There is another Grom. I gotta go see this other Grom. There's another Grom right there. I'm gonna go say what's up to this guy. CT Grommer's out here making friends all the time, you guys. This is how CT Grommer grows the squad every single day, organic growth. I see a guy on a Grom I don't recognize. I chase him down and I say, join us. Join us, buddy. What's up? What's up, dude? I'm Daniel. I'm Lazarus. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. Dude, we got a uh, we got a squad that all rides together, all Groms. Really? Yeah. I just got this yesterday. Can I can tell, bro. This thing is clean. 2020, bro, or 2019? Uh, I think 18. What? 18. No way. It's got the oh, really? it's got the white panel. That's either a 19 or a 20. Oh, it might be. It's fresher than you think, bro.
So are you gonna mod it all up or what? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got any buddies that ride them yet? Mm-mm. Okay. That ain't it, bro. This is where it's at. Yeah. Well, dude, if you ever want to come out, next time we have a ride, let me either get your Instagram. Yeah. I'll ride with you for a minute. You just riding around here? Oh uh, Yeah, I'll just go wherever. All right, cool. Yeah. Let's ride for a minute. I cannot believe I made a new acquaintance while shooting a video. Guys, that's how it happens, though, all the time. I'll see another Grom, and I'll uh, go out and just get him like that. Chase him down or try to flag him down. That's how it's done.